Okay, let's talk about some specific diseases. Let's start with cardiology, and in particular, cardiovascular disease. Some of the things we're going to look at are coronary artery disease, which can come in a couple of different types. What we're usually talking about here is blocked artery due to fat okay, building up in the arteries, which then leads to a heart attack, or a myocardial infarction, which is the proper term for a heart attack. Hypertension, of course, refers to high blood pressure, and we've talked about this before. Some of the risk factors that we look at are everything from inactivity, obesity, high blood pressure, smoking, high cholesterol, and diabetes. Now I'm going to switch to a different picture. This picture is in your notes packet um, to look at the outline for high risk factors for heart disease. All right, this is table 42-2 in your textbook. And these are the guidelines from the American Heart Association. Um, and these are some of their recommendations, okay, to avoid tobacco, so no smoking. Um, the risk is almost twice of that of a non-smoker when it comes to heart attack, stroke, or any type of heart disease. Decrease stress. Okay, keep our blood pressure to the goals we've talked about previous to this class, which is 120 over 80 or less and maintain healthy blood cholesterol. In this case, total cholesterol should be less than 200. This is a number you will have to know for your medical laboratory class next semester. In addition, it recommends being more active. Okay, physical activity, anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes per day, will help decrease stress. Okay, actively decreases blood pressure and cholesterol by releasing hormones in the body and it helps to prevent obesity, which is a high risk factor for heart disease. It also recommends choosing good nutrition, which means um, limiting your alcohol consumption. So usually um, for men, one drink or less a day, and for women, just less than that. Again, managing stress, your high cholesterol. Um, if you manage your diabetes, because that is a high risk factor. And of course, okay, not being obese, it okay, certainly helps with heart disease. So you should talk to your patients about how we prevent heart attack according to these guidelines. There are a few other diseases. Again, with the cardiovascular system, it's not just the heart, but all of the blood vessels. So this would include anything that includes artery or any other blood vessel disorders. Coronary artery disease and coronary arteries are the arteries that supply blood to the heart. And if their job is to supply blood to the heart, then of course, um, disruption or blockage okay, of these arteries would create a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. Dysrhythmias, okay, that's just any time the heart does not work properly. We talked about the three that I expect you to know with the cardiovascular unit. Heart failure is very common, and in fact, we often call this CHF for congestive heart failure. Um, and this is something that happens as we age. The muscle becomes weaker in the heart, just as all of the muscles in the body become weaker. Okay, and this is what a lot of folks die of when we talk about dying of natural causes or older age. On rare occasions, things like viruses, flus, and other issues can inflame the heart tissue itself, so to create inflammation in the actual muscle of the heart, which would create a problem. And there are things like valve diseases, and valve diseases would include things that would have um, implications with heart murmurs and the improper moving of blood flow through the heart. The next section is our dermatological condition. Okay, there are a couple of things that we do need to look at here. Okay, the first is acne vulgaris, which is what is being shown here. And that is really just an extreme form of acne. There are plenty of medications that are available um, through the doctor that can certainly help with this extreme form of acne. Contact dermatitis is actually one of the most common dermatological conditions. All right, this really just means that you have some sort of a breakout any time that you touch something that sort of doesn't agree with your skin. So if you're allergic to a particular soap, um, laundry detergent, okay, this would create kind of a hive situation in the body. Psoriasis is something you should have talked about in AMP1. 
This is an autoimmune disorder which creates this extremely dry skin. Um, it looks like almost silverish or whitish plaque okay, over the skin. And because you do address this as a project in AMP1, I'll, I'll keep it to the very basics for this lecture. Ringworm, okay, is a disorder. Ringworm is a disorder, um, which we often call athlete's foot, jock itch, okay. It's a buildup of fungus uh, in the skin. It often looks circular and red um, in appearance. And we have plenty of topical creams or things that you can place um, right on the skin to help treat this. Moles, of course, are, are raised bumps in the skin. We're primarily concerned about these because of cancer. All right, we do look for a couple of things, such as uneven shape, a change in the moles over time, or if they're generally larger than the end of a pencil eraser, um, they are more likely to cause cancer in the future. Here's some of the skin cancers um, that you may see. So we did talk about moles. Okay, so there are a number of different types of skin cancers, and they often present as tumors okay, in the skin. Warts are actually caused by a virus. These are actually relatively easy to treat. They make plenty of over-the-counter products that you can place right on the warts. And they can be frozen right off the skin. The trick with this is really just to get the whole wart treated. If anything is left behind, the virus stays in the skin, and the wart is going to regrow. Eczema is the one that's shown here in the picture. And this is kind of an extreme dry skin. Um, and oftentimes the skin gets so dry it cracks and bleeds. Um, for this, it is often an allergy to things that are found in soaps, laundry detergents. Um, so oftentimes, you know, using the right types of lotions and then switching all of the bath products, um, soap products, and things in our patients' lives can certainly help prevent um, outbreaks of eczema. Now let's switch a little bit to endocrine diseases and disorders. And the big one I'd like to talk about here is diabetes. All right, and there's really two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is really this first one where we have a problem with our pancreas. And our pancreas secretes insulin, and for whatever reason, they're not entirely sure. Type 1 diabetics often get diagnosed as very young children. Their pancreas stop work, stops working and they stop secreting insulin. This, of course, creates high blood sugars. Our patients become very ill. Okay, and these are your insulin-dependent diabetics. Type 2 diabetes is more of the second type shown here. Right, this is much more common. Okay, it usually is what we call adult onset, although our biggest rising group at this point is teenage um, individuals and children. Um, so we're seeing, so now we call it type 2 and not really adult onset. And what this really means is that the more fat we have in our body, okay, the more insulin we need to control our blood sugars. All right, and, you know, if, so if somebody's obese or overweight, which is a big risk factor for type 2 diabetes, they may be producing enough insulin. However, our body is not adequately able to use it. Therefore, we end up in the same position as somebody who is just not producing it. However... Okay, losing weight in this situation may help our patients okay, to readjust their insulin levels. Hyperglycemia is less um, is common, so that means high blood sugars. And really, for all diabetics, whether they are type one or type two, the goal of treatment really is to keep a normal blood sugar level. The more normal we keep our blood sugar levels, the less likely we'll see complications like vision loss amputations, and peripheral uh, blood vessel diseases. The other endocrine disorders that you see a lot of are thyroid disorders. And in particular, you see hypothyroidism, which is low or decreased activity. And some of the common signs and symptoms of this are really fatigue, general malaise, um, cold all the time, headaches, confusion. And the thyroid is really responsible for your metabolism component of your body. So these folks will often gain weight and don't know why. Okay, there's a very simple blood test in order to test for this. Um, so it is a fairly easy diagnosis. Treatment, we just treat with something we call thyroxine, which is um, what is actually the thyroid is making. 
that helps to drive your metabolism, and this generally helps folks who have hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is a high um, amount of thyroid hormone. This is less common. Um, however, this is also serious. Again, it sort of increases our metabolism, okay, which will cause our patients to lose weight, be very warm, have lots of energy, um, but this also creates malnutrition, not enough fat production in the body um, for all of the things we need. So this as well can be very serious um, in addition to hypothyroidism. With gastrointestinal disorders and diseases, your big job as an MA is really to make sure that you document them properly. Some common diseases and disorders include hernias, which is where part of the small intestine um, pushes into an area where it shouldn't belong. It's most common in men and in boys where a piece pushes down into the testicles. Um, and once it pushes into a place other than the abdomen, it can actually cut off the blood supply to that small intestine, which can be very serious. Cholecystitis and cholelithiasis. Okay, chole refers to the gallbladder. Okay, cholecystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder, whereas cholelithiasis is stones in the gallbladder. Oftentimes, this just means that we have to remove the gallbladder, and we can really live without a gallbladder. Colitis is just a, a term for inflammation of the large intestine. I'm hoping at this point in your life you guys understand what constipation versus diarrhea is. Okay, diverticulitis is an inflammation okay, of the large intestine that's caused by a person's autoimmune system. So it is chronic. Um, and oftentimes they have to change their diet, okay, all of their eating habits, and have very difficult times digesting certain types of food. GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease, and this should be in the chart that you've been given in your packet of notes. And really what this means is that these folks have constant reflux, heartburn. Okay, so they have consistent heartburn, not just the occasional heartburn. And this, of course, can be treated with medication, um, as it can be quite unpleasant for the patient. And hemorrhoids okay, is enlargening of the blood vessels, particularly in the rectum, so one of the biggest signs of hemorrhoids that we see um, is bleeding in the rectum. Some neurological diseases. Number one is Alzheimer's disease. Okay, this is a very common type of dementia uh, where patients become very confused. They're often very forgetful. And this is a disease that tends to progress. So it starts out with some very little things but then tends to get worse and worse okay, as the years pass by. And then they often forget okay, family members, um, spouses, what they've done that day. So it can be very severe. Um, they often have to be placed in nursing homes because they can no longer take care of themselves and they cannot remember. Bell's palsy um, can present similar to stroke. It is actually an infection in the facial nerve which controls the muscles in the face. Um, however, this one generally tends to pass. So it may appear like a stroke or one half of the face um, is paralyzed. However, because it's just a viral infection, generally within anywhere from a couple days to a few weeks, this one tends to pass. Encephalitis is swelling of the brain. Okay, and clearly any swelling of the brain can cause um, different types of problems with movement, consciousness, and other problems. Epilepsy, we've talked about um, epilepsy is a seizure disorder. Okay, migraines are very severe headaches. And folks who suffer from these okay, tend to suffer, um, have chronic types of headaches. This is not your occasional headache. Um, and Parkinson's disease okay, is a genetic disorder right, where a person has issues with muscle control. Okay, so what it is is a decrease in a hormone we call dopamine inside the brain. And dopamine is responsible for smooth muscle movement. So these folks often shake, have abnormal movement patterns. Um, this is what the actor Michael J. Fox is diagnosed with. So if you look at him in videos, you can actually see him shake okay, and jerk a little bit. Because of this decrease in dopamine, it changes the muscular pattern. And of course, there's always trauma when it comes to neurology. Um, so people can lose sensation or motion. 
Hemiplegia means to partial loss of movement, usually on